this discussion about scan versus seek is totally endless. We all know that in most cases, seeks perform better than scans, especially when the optimizer has decided to choose seek and of course when it makes sense. But sometimes when we look at the execution time or the elapsed time of both the queries, let's say one query is performing a seek and if we have a subsequent version of that query which is performing a scan and we look at the execution and elapsed time and they are more or less same, we tend to overlook that there could be some tuning opportunities where we could convert scan to seek. Now, this discussion and this demo and this video is motivated by uh, a client uh, discussion that I was having uh, with one of the DBAs is where there were so many chatty workloads. When I say chatty workloads, I mean uh, workloads, queries that take very low, very less time to execute, probably less than a second or just maybe one or two seconds. And in such scenarios with these chatty workloads, whether the optimizer is seeking or whether it is scanning, the execution time, the perceived execution time that you see in SQL Server Management Studio tends to be the same. And then you tend to overlook that there could be some tuning opportunities with that scan, you know, or the plans that are actually scanning. And you should kind of think about converting them to seek or maybe just create indexes, etc. Well, that's a different discussion altogether. But the point here is, and this demo is about showing you the intricacies involved with scan versus seek and just don't conclude that the performance of both of them are kind of same by just looking at execution or elapsed time. There are other things to look at. So let's get down with the demo. I'm again using AdventureWorks 2016 here and there is a table here, DBO transaction. Let's go and look into this table and see all the indexes that this, this table has. We are going to focus on this index, which is on product ID and transaction date. Remember, we I want to perform a seek operation, a non-clustered index seek. So I write a query here, which is select star from DBO transactions, where product ID is equal to something and transaction date is equal to something. Now, I have ensured that we are using both the attributes and we are using an equality operator. So the optimizer will go and seek on this index. Well, that is what is expected. Now, when I run this query, two things, actual execution plan is turned on. So press control M or click on this icon. And I've also turned on set statistics time. So in the messages tab, I'm going to get time information, the execution time and the CPU time, etc. Now let's go and execute the query. Let's do that. When we execute the query and whenever we do that, we always keep an eye on the status bar as to how much time it has taken for this query to execute. Now you would notice that this has taken less than a second or just about a second. So management studio here tells me 0000. 000, 000, 000, 000, 000. So this just could be a second or less than a second to execute. Keep this in mind. Let's jump over to the execution plan. And of course, two things you will observe here. One, seek has been performed and this is the right thing to do. The optimizer uh, from a cost-based perspective, uh, of course, thinks that seek will be better as an index access method and it goes well. And this is a serial plan. Keep this also in mind. But now when you look at the execution time, you see it is like uh, zero seconds or one second or whatever it is. Let's jump over to the messages tab and look at finer details here. And you will see that this query has taken just about 272 milliseconds to execute. That's the elapsed time that you can see here, which is of course less than a second. Now to show you the performance difference between seek and scan, I am writing the same query. Uh, with a scan. So I'm forcing a scan here. I'm forcing the optimizer to scan instead of seek using this table hint. So I say with index zero, which means force a clustered index scan. The predicates, etc., are all same. Now, when I execute this query, and mind you, I'm trying to show you the difference between scan and seek by forcing it, but the idea here is when you are doing query tuning, you are looking for opportunities where the optimizer is scanning and you are kind of investigating why it is scanning, why it is not seeking. And if there are chances, opportunities where you could convert scans to seek, either by looking at sargability aspect or conversions aspect, or even by just creating the right index, which might be missing. Well, all that 
discussion is beyond the scope of this demo. This demo is only talking about scan versus seek performance. Okay, so back to the demo. We did this query where we saw it was taking about a second to execute and precisely 272 milliseconds. Now let's go and execute this one where we are forcing the optimizer to scan. Let's go and execute this. It runs. And now the first thing you will again observe is it just takes about a second to execute something similar to what you saw earlier. This is the point, the performance difference between the first one, which is seek versus the second one, which is scan is kind of not noticeable. It is not visible. I know it, it's like flick of a second there. So we as developers, DBS would assume, okay, it's all, it's all great. And you know, we will not go deeper and try to look for tuning opportunities. But let's jump over to the execution plan first. First thing that will catch your attention, of course, is that now SQL Server is performing a scan because you force scan. But the other thing is now you have a parallel plan. That's, that's a critical thing because a serial plan has been converted to a parallel plan. Parallel plan here mean, means multiple threads, which means more resources. Um, and what could this transform to? Let's jump over to the messages tab. The first thing you will observe is the elapsed time. Now you will see elapsed time is 913 milliseconds. And previously when it was seeking, it was 272 milliseconds. Now in hindsight, when you're dealing with such low values like less than a second, uh, do not be too concerned about 500 milliseconds or 600 milliseconds or 400 milliseconds. In fact, just before recording the video when I was running it and I was playing around with these queries, seek was taking about three milliseconds and scan was taking about 500 milliseconds. And now you see the difference is a little wider, but the point is both of them run in less than a second, which is where the difference is not noticeable. And this is where you will not take that effort to go deeper into finding tuning opportunities where you could convert scan to seek. But here comes the catch. Look at the CPU time, which is, four, seven, four, nine milliseconds, close to five seconds. I mean, in, in totality, if you see close to 5,000 milliseconds is the CPU time. And for seek, this was zero milliseconds negligible. I hope you remember that. But now what catches my attention is how come four, seven, four, nine milliseconds. I mean, the query ran in less than a second. Where is all this five second con being consumed for, from? Remember, this is a parallel plan, which means multiple threads are working behind the scene and each thread gets a, a slice of this 4749 milliseconds. So let's jump over to the execution plan and um, let's select clustered index scan and right click and go to the properties there. And let's go and look at actual time statistics, which we will get from select, I guess, yes. Okay, let me just see. Query time stats, there you go. So let me expand this and uh, CPU time is 494 seconds. And for clustered index scan, I am going to expand actual time statistics. That is the one I was looking for. And you will see actual elapsed CPU time 4947. Let me expand this a bit and drag here. There you go. This is what I wanted to show you. So each thread here, thread one to thread eight has taken about like 600 milliseconds each and then six multiplied by eight, four, eight, 4,800 milliseconds approximately. This is what you cannot ignore. And this has happened because scan was deployed by the optimizer. I know in the demo it is engineered and I'm forcing, but in reality, when it is happening naturally due to non-sargability or due to the lack of right indexes, just do not look at the execution time because both of them execute in less than a second. But if you see scan is consuming a lot more, a lot more resources than Seek, you can see Seek worked with just one thread and the CPU time was less than zero milliseconds, but scanned worked with eight threads and in totality, they took about 5,000 milliseconds. That is the point which you need to keep in mind. Well, a quick summary. So in this demo, you saw that um, whenever, what are the learnings? The learnings here are that whenever you see a scan happening, look for opportunities where you can convert scans to Seek. 
right? Also look into opportunities where you are seeing parallel plans and can they be converted to uh, uh, serial plans, especially when, in, in at least in my case here, cost threshold of parallelism was quite low, set to five. So even queries that are very cheap, they still get parallelized. And that's where uh, you don't want SQL Server to parallelize every inexpensive query. All right, and yes, third learning, important learning, which is just do not look at elapsed time. Pay special atten attention to CPU time. Happy SQL. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos. Most importantly, visit sqlmaestros.com. There's a lot of SQL learning resources out there. Video courses, master classes, lab kits, eBooks, blogs, hands-on labs, and a lot more. Follow us on Twitter, at the rate SQL Maestros, and myself, A underscore Bunsel. Last but not the least, do subscribe to our newsletters. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.